Welcome to GE Healthcare Cardiovascular Ultrasounds Technology Showcase. Today, we are going to share with you some of the features on the Vivity 95 Ultra Edition that help in the complex procedures in structural heart intervention and the important role ECHO plays in the success of these procedures. Today, our speaker is Dr. Praveen Mehrotra, Director of Echocardiography, Associate Professor of Medicine and Division of Cardiology at Sydney Kimmel Medical College and Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. I'll pass it over to him. Thank you, Jacob. Um, today, I will, will be speaking about the importance of echocardiography in structural heart interventions. Uh, my disclosure statement is that I have a consulting agreement with GE Healthcare. So echocardiography is key to the technical success of many structural heart disease interventions. The structural echocardiographer needs to have a detailed three-dimensional understanding of cardiac anatomy and dynamics and familiarity with advanced 3D and biplane echo techniques to help facilitate and ensure technical success of these procedures. Importantly, rapid ascertainment of accurate information regarding cardiac anatomy and device success or failure is critical. And advanced echo technologies and features provided by the GE Vivid E95 Ultra Edition make this possible. Today, I'm gonna to highlight specific cases that demonstrate the value that echo technologies bring to the guidance of structural heart procedures. I will be speaking about some of these features listed over here and how they support multiple procedures, including transcatheter aortic valve replacement, transeptal puncture, left atrial appendage closure, transcatheter mitral valve repair, and paravalvular leak closure. So beginning with transcatheter aortic valve replacement, in the pre-TAVR evaluation, accurate measurement of the aortic annulus is critical for procedural success. As you know, the aortic annulus is formed by the virtual basal ring formed by the three nadirs of the aortic valve leaflets. As shown in here in this schematic, the basal ring is formed by the three stars in the green ring, and this sits below the surgical aortic annulus, which is the true ventricular arterial junction, and this sits below the sinotubular junction, which is shown here in blue. So we use 40 markers in this case to mark the three nadirs of the cusps of the aortic valve to facilitate the annular measurement. And as you can see here, the red marker is the base of the right coronary cusp, the yellow marker is the base of the non-coronary cusp, and the green marker is the base of the left coronary cusp. And the markers are shown in the multi-planar image, and they also show up in the volumetric image shown above, so that we have confidence in knowing what we are measuring. So 40 markers are 3D annotations, which are viewable from all angles on the 40 volume data sets and their 2D views. They facilitate communication in the echo lab, cath lab, and operating room. As the 3D data set is manipulated, so moves the 40 marker, and when the 40 marker moves in the volume, it also moves in the 2D multiplanar image as shown here in this image. We can also use the aortic valve quantification tool, which is a semi-automated quantification tool, which pr produces a surface rendering of the LVOT and aortic root. It provides us with a mean, minimum, and maximum diameter, as well as an annular area and perimeter. I also like to use the 40 markers to measure the left main height. As you know, TAVR may be relatively contraindicated when the aortic annulus to left main distance is less than 10 to 11 millimeters because the valve can cover the left main ostium or calcium can be pushed into the ostium. And in this case, the yellow marker marks the annular plane and the red marker marks the base of the left main orifice. And this allows us to easily measure this distance in the multiplanar image. And it allows us to see this distance in the volumetric image shown above. And it gives us confidence in, in making this measurement. In terms of post-TAVR evaluation, flexi-light imaging of the transcatheter heart valve is very useful. 
FlexiLight imaging is a photorealistic rendering technique for light source-based illumination of heart structures. And in particular, it's very useful uh, to look at thin wall structures such as prosthetic valve leaflets. In the middle here, we can see an orifice area measurement with flexi slice imaging. On the right, we can see a cropped 4D image showing the relationship between the transcatheter heart valve and the left main orifice and the space in between them. And on the right, we can see a gradient measurement performed with auto Doppler. Auto Doppler allows us to make this measurement quickly without having to use the trackball on our machine. Now, what about transeptal puncture? With the Vivid E95 Ultra Edition, this is very easy. As you know, accurate guidance of the transeptal puncture is critical for many structural heart disease procedures. And this is very easy with biplane and triplane multidimensional imaging. On the left here, you can see a bicaval view, which shows the superior and inferior relationship of the catheter. And then on the right with biplane, we can see the height above the mitral valve. Now using the angle button on the machine, we can rotate the plane to the mid-esophageal 45 degree view, which gives us the anterior posterior view. So now we can toggle back and forth and look at the inferior superior relationship, anterior posterior relationship, and the height above the mitral valve without having to use any probe movement. So we get instant information about puncture location only with the use of knobs. This is an image of transeptal puncture shown with FlexiLite imaging. As I mentioned, FlexiLite is useful for thin structures, and we can see the catheter very well as it traverses into the left atrium with the shadow behind, as well as the relationship to the mitral valve below. What about uh, pre-mitral valve repair evaluation? Well, one of the most important things is to localize prolapse and flail defects because this is critical for determining clip placement and orientation and where to focus mitral valve repair. And the 40 Auto MVQ program makes this possible by automatically segmenting the three pairs of segments of the mitral valve. As you can see here in this example, we can see that there is severe prolapse and flail of the P1 segment and P2 segment. And it also provides us with a topographic surface rendering shown below, showing the same prolapse and flail of the P1 and P2 segments, with red demonstrating severe prolapse and orange and yellow demonstrating less severe prolapse. We can also use this program to assess mitral regurgitation severity. And this is made possible because we can separate the leaflet traces at the regurgitant orifice to obtain a true 3D EROA with MVQ. And this is a key distinguishing feature of Viva's 40 Auto MVQ program to obtain the ERO area. So by separating the leaflets, uh, we can see here in the surface rendering, uh, a rendering of the orifice area. And in this case, the orifice area was 0.7 centimeter squared, consistent with severe mitral regurgitation. We can also use 3D color Doppler data sets to assess mitral regurgitation severity. In this case, we are obtaining what's called the vena contracted area from the data set. We move our slicing plane down to the level of the vena contracta. The vena contracted area is a correlate of the EROA, and we can trace this in the short axis in the right bottom corner to get an assessment of MR severity. And in this case, the MR was also severe. I'm also um, excited to introduce blood speckle imaging. Blood speckle imaging is a Doppler independent method to understand complex intracardiac flow dynamics. And in this case, we can for the first time actually visualize streamlines of flow. And in this case, we can see the streamlines and the different components of regurgitant flow. We can see the proximal flow convergence. We can see the streamlines in the distal jet displaying the classic Kawanda effect. And these things were never possible before. In the pre-TMVR evaluation, we also have to measure the posterior leaflet length as well as the mitral valve area. TMVR may be contraindicated in the setting of a short posterior leaflet. 
and it may also be contraindicated in the setting of a small mitral valve area. And in these cases, FlexiSlice is key for providing these measurements. What about TMVR guidance? Um, crystal clear 4D imaging and VUX facilitates communication between the echocardiographer and interventional cardiologist. Uh, as shown here on the left, um, you can see the uh, catheter going down to the mitral valve leaflet level. Uh, level. We can see the clip uh, orienting above the leaflet, and we can also see the uh, grasp of the leaflets as shown here on the right. And VUX facilitates this because we can anticipate the needs of the interventionalist uh, by knowing what he needs so we can show him the images in advance. And this truly expedites the procedure. FlexiLight is also key in post-TMVR evaluation. It allows us to see the thin-walled leaflets, and in this case, we can see residual mitral defects adjacent to the clip that's been implanted. And because there was residual mitral regurgitation um, at this location, a second clip was placed with further reduction in the residual MR. Now, moving on to a case of left atrial appendage closure, of course, we assess the left atrial appendage with 2D imaging. And in this case, we can see that there is no thrombus in the appendage. We also measure the appendage at multiple angles, zero, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and 135 degrees. And in this case, the appendage measured 17 by 21 millimeters. But we can also use FlexiSlice to measure the left atrial appendage orifice. By getting a top-down view of the left atrial appendage, we can measure the appendage, which in this case measured 17 by 22 millimeters, and a 27 millimeter device was chosen to close the appendage. Uh, we can also guide the procedure with 4D zoom imaging. The pigtail catheter in this case was placed by the interventionalist accidentally in the left ventricle, and we can help, the, help them to guide it into the left atrial appendage as shown here on the right. So using 2D imaging, we can see the deployment of the device, but it's a little difficult to see if this is a proper deployment. And when we turn on the 4D imaging, we can clearly see that this is a proximal and sideways deployment. So the device was therefore upsized to a 30 millimeter device, and the device was placed deeper in the appendage. But we noticed that a posterior lobe was not captured and we can see leak around the device by color Doppler. And careful inspection showed that a pectinate muscle was preventing full expansion of the device. So with a tug, the device was brought further back into the appendage and both lobes were successfully captured. And with 3D imaging, we were able to see that the device was stable, that all lobes were captured. There was improved alignment with the appendage and there was no leak by color Doppler. My last case is a paravalvular leak closure case with the Vivid E95. A 70-year-old male presented to our institution with dyspnea and moderate to severe paravalvular MR after recent bioprosthetic mitral valve replacement at an outside hospital. In this 40 zoom picture, we can see a large paramitral defect at two o'clock. And in the right, we can see moderate to severe regurgitation. With FlexiSlice imaging, we were able to slice into the defect and we were able to measure the defect at 10 by eight millimeters. And therefore a 10 millimeter closure device was chosen to close this. But we also saw that in addition to this very large defect, adjacent to it was a very small defect, um, probably separated by a loose suture. And so why was this important? This was important because the larger defect had to be wired with ONFOS 3D TE guidance. We wanted to make sure that we didn't wire the smaller defect. So as you can see here, when the device was deployed, we can see the device is well seated. We can see the relationship between the device and the bioprosthetic valve. We can see the leaflets opening and closing normally. Normally, there is no disruption of valve function. And on the right, we can see that there is minimal residual MR 
likely due to the small defect that was enclosed. So identifying that there were two defects instead of one with FlexiSlice imaging was critical to ensuring procedural success. I'm also excited to introduce CT Echo Fusion on the Vivid E95 Ultra Edition. This is a potential breakthrough technology for complex and emerging structural heart procedures. Where 2D and 3D echo is limited, CT Fusion may help to fill in the gaps for better understanding of cardiac anatomy. And this is currently feasible for the aortic valve, mitral valve, and left atrial appendage. In this case, we are showing co-registration of both CT and 3D echo data sets at the aortic valve. And as you can see here, we have a side-by-side -side image of a CT and echo at the level of the aortic root and valve. And as the images move down to the level of the annulus, both images move together. We can see calcification in the aortic annulus on the CT. We can also see the same calcification at the level of the annulus on the echo. Where there is dropout on echo, we are able to see the anatomy better with CT. So CT echo fusion truly enhances the field of view. I think this will be especially useful for tr transcatheter mitral valve replacement in the example shown on the left in a tendine valve. And on the right, we can see an example of CT echo fusion of the left atrial appendage. As the echo moves, um, so does the CT. And as the CT, da CT data set is manipulated, so is the echo data set. So in conclusion, GE, 3D, and 4D TE technologies are an integral component of the pre-procedural planning, intra-procedural guidance, and post-procedural assessment and treatment of complex valvular and structural heart diseases. Specifically, the features that I've mentioned today, 4D markers, auto Doppler, flexi light, flexi slice, flexi views, ViewX, 4D auto AVQ and MVQ, blood speckle imaging, and CT echo fusion help to support structural heart procedures, and they may help physicians make rapid and accurate diagnoses. They can help with qualitative and quantitative analyses of cardiac structures. They enhance communication between the echocardiographer and interventionalists, and they can lead to technical procedural success, ultimately with the goal to improve patient outcomes. Thank you.